Uh, my name is Sam Bruce. I've lived in the Benga area for approximately 31 years. Um, in 2007, whenever there was a rise in crimes and murders in Crystal Ray, the hills, uh, there was um, a lot of public attention with that. And then we had different hijacks, uh, hijackings and car thefts and stuff on Aronal Road. So this is kind of like a repeat of, of that. It brings in a lot of uh, public attention, a lot of interest where everybody wants to get involved. In Benga 2008, we formed the Neighborhood Watch Group Community Policing Program with Ms. Phillips. Um, we were actually, we had the five zones as Corporal or Sergeant uh, McCoy stated. Uh, we had the zone captains, we had lieutenants, uh, we had a monthly zone meetings, we also had a People's Coalition uh, Committee which made recommendations to work with police. On the Neighborhood Watch, we were actually in 2009, we were 2009-2010, Benga was actually the safest town in Belize. Well, also the cleanest because we had a cleanup campaign. Um, as human nature as it is, as things calm down, crime issues, because I believe we went four, four or five months with not a single crime when Ms. Phillips was here. Not one single report of any kind of crime, which was unheard of. But as people get more comfortable and there's nothing going on, they lose interest, they don't show up to the meetings, they don't participate until something happens again. And then everybody is screaming, we need a neighborhood watch. We have neighborhood watches, but no one participates, or very, very little, as Ms. Hall had, um, Superintendent Hall has, has indicated, two people, five people, stuff like that. And we have a citizen's committee on crime. And we had, what, four or five people? That was it. So it's, on one hand, it's good. I mean, this, uh, uh, the gentleman here mentioned that this is disappointing to him because he wanted a big crowd. To me, this is a big crowd because I'm, I'm accustomed to two, three, four, five people, which is shameful because the only way that you curb the crime is for the community to get all involved to assist because I don't care how many boots on the ground, I don't care how many vehicles you have, police cannot stop crime. You can't stop it. The police can only respond to crime. That's my opinion. I don't know if that's, if you agree, Campo, but that's my opinion. So it takes the community working with police to curb or stop crime. Now, as long as everyone is all interested in participating, that's great. Let's fire up the neighborhood watches again. Let's keep everyone under pressure, doing their, their job holding them to the to their promises and hopefully we make a difference but this time it's on public record if we're successful and crime starts going down don't stop your participation you need to keep it up that's the only way to maintain a stability in less crime in a safer area. It's a daily thing. And in zone four, since 2008, I've been the, the captain of, of zone four. We produce a calendar, which uh, before COVID, we would go door to door to the different residents and hand out the calendars, which has all the important uh, numbers. We would uh, have uh, uh, zone for arts and crafts for the children, which the community policing uh, effort with uh, Sergeant uh, Corporal McCoy, we would uh, uh, bring in the cadets. We would really participate in a lot of programs uh, for the for the children, and bring in guests from from the um, Minister of Health, from the Fire Department, from uh, uh, the cadets would do programs and stuff. Uh, uh, marching programs to show and then try to get enrollments of, of the children to be involved in the cadets. So, uh, and, and we'd have Christmas programs and things like this. So, anyway, the message is 
You have an interest now. Maintain the interest. Don't slack off. Because we've been this, down this road before, years ago. And it's up to you to maintain your organizations, your neighborhood watches, educate yourself, and push the police and the mayor to do their job. But we have to do our job. That's all.